This is Joy from the Red Fan Rebellion, and it is cold on the mountaintop this morning. I didn't anticipate how hard it would be to show up for myself every day. It's five days in, it's already getting difficult, but it's so rewarding. I'm gonna keep pushing through. It's kind of like exercising, right? Or New Year's resolutions. It's not about missing days, it's about continuing to show up the next day. The two biggest things that ever changed my perspective about exercising and really any kind of growth and personally is um, celebrate what you can do and not what you are trying to do. So for me, even making these videos is a huge accomplishment. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time and always talk myself out of. So I'm celebrating showing up and that's enough for now. I'm not worrying about editing. I'm not worrying about making them perfect. I'm not worried about, I'm just showing up. The hardest part for me is always showing up to the gym. It's not mentally, um, even though, oh, I hate running, I still do it, but okay. Anyway, and the second thing that changed my perspective was 90 days to make or break a habit. Cause I'd always heard, I don't know, like 30 days or something like a month or whatever. Um, but when I heard 90, three months, to really change your pattern of thinking to anticipate instead of, oh, I'm making the choice to go to the gym and might think, oh, well, I have to be in the gym. It's weird that I'm not in the gym. 90 days totally changed my perspective and I was able to have a little bit more patience with why it was so miserable going to the gym <laughs> when I started. And I started, when I started working out, I could not run a mile. I could not run at all. It was awful. And I did a couch to 5k program. The idea being you're starting from the couch where you're not doing anything and it starts you off walking a certain number of minutes a day and then you increase walking to running or jogging, walking to jogging or quick walking and then quick walking to jogging and then jogging to running. And it's only a 30 day program and couch to 5k 5k is 3.1 miles and it worked and somewhere along that journey I stopped loathing running and just hated running and loved adored having ran loved the feeling of having done a mile two miles the feeling of I just ran that far and did that that's somewhere in my brain it switched to that positive reinforcement <clears throat> excuse me, so uh, that's where I started. And then on this trip, the past seven months, there has not been very much exercise or self-care at all. So I'm just now getting back into it. And I was pleased that it hadn't all disappeared <laughs> over that time and I could still run and lift and things. So that was good news, it's not all gone. And I'm thankful I put in the time before to show up for myself when I could so that I'm not starting from nothing now. Uh, I really wasn't sure at first what I was going to talk about today, um, but I guess I wanted to comment a little bit more on high school and it was a strange time for me. I guess I've always been a weirdo liking the creepy things and I had two brothers uh, but that made it really difficult to socialize with with girls um, that expected someone to be a girly girl and I was definitely not that uh, and I wasn't you know old enough or mature enough to to be the person to bridge that gap like I can now um, but it didn't help in middle school that I had glasses, pretty dorky glasses, 
braces um, and I was a little bit overweight and I was okay with it I you know I didn't like I wasn't okay with it but I was like I knew it you know I wasn't a person who exercised or really we didn't we didn't come from a lot of money so it's not we didn't eat super poorly but we didn't eat great either so a lot of processed foods and things um, but I was definitely a little bit of an ugly duckling story um, I'll never forget in high school this because the way it worked is there were a bunch of elementary schools and then a couple middle schools and then one high school so everyone was kind of converging there and one of the first days of high school a girl who had stood next to me like our last names were pretty similar I won't call her out because that would just be mean <laughs> I'm sure she didn't mean anything by it but uh, our last names were similar so she stood next to me and we grew up together so she was in elementary school the whole time middle school the whole time and she was like oh my gosh hi like where did you move from because in the summer before ninth grade, I got contacts, I got my, my braces off, and I'd kind of grown up a little bit into my body and slimmed down. And she didn't recognize me. And I looked at her and I was like, it's me. And, and she goes, oh my God, oh, hi. And it got really weird. And at the time it just felt like this very strange thing. But looking back as an adult, that is crazy that just braces glasses and I became not invisible. And that was enough to be like, who are you? That was pretty crazy. Um, most of my interests were, I guess, reading, writing, creative stuff. I liked theater, but I didn't, I didn't necessarily love performing or I loved performing, but I wasn't really comfortable in the high school setting doing it. So I got into stage crew, building sets. Ah, oh, it was awesome. Learning all these different tools and um, solutions to problems and working as a team, having like that parental role of, uh, of a, a crew leader who would come in and, and teach us how to do this. And it was every weekend for most of the year. And I mean, it was our lives. It was the thing I looked forward to all week and and it, it's what made everything worth it because it was so fun and I'd never had a place to just be myself and, and really have fun like that. Um, and stage crew, I just excelled there. I really, really enjoyed the work and the performance part of when the when the show days were and we're backstage and it's everything's pitch black and everyone's in black and you're all doing this work behind the scenes that needs to be done so that people can see this story or message or whatever that we're putting out and i loved that aspect of it i was crew leader for two years and just loved it um, and I was thinking about how much that really translates <laughs> to what I wound up doing as an adult on this trip. Um, and otherwise, I'm, I mean, I was, I bartended for a couple years in Baltimore and that was all black in the dark work, but it wasn't, there wasn't as much teamwork. The most teamwork was kind of staying out of each other's way. Um, behind the bar, but with boots on the ground activism and feminism, it's all teamwork. It's all sisterhood. And we called ourselves in high school a crew family. I mean, we knew we were so close. We all knew parts of our lives that we didn't share with friends, other friends, because we spent 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day together. And there was solidarity in this shared goal, this shared mission. It was up to us and we were working together to make it happen. And radical feminism, it's like that times a hundred <laughs> times a thousand that it's, it's real life stakes, first of all. 
real life relationships and, and, and sisterhood and and teamwork. And I'm glad I learned how to work in the dark because we're just hated trying to do our work in the open. There's a, a video, my pinned video, I think, on my um, Twitter profile at Little Red Rad is this protest I did in Chicago. And I do a lot of different protests. I don't like telling women no when they ask, what do you think about this protest? Or, you know, it would be really nice for this protest to happen. I want to make, I want to make women's dreams come true. I want to make women's passions and visions. I want them to, I want them, their voices to be heard, their outrage to be expressed. I want to help them do that if they're capable or I, I want to do it for them if they're not capable. And so that leads me to a lot of different avenues. Um, I've done protests with just two of us outside a clinic. I've done protests with 50 women across the nation. I've done protests with, with tons of women outside a prison. It's, it's across, across the spectrum. Um, it's amazing. And sorry, my ability to do that See, this is where the part where I told myself I wouldn't edit <laughs> gets really hard. Sorry. Um, talking about sisterhood and, and teamwork and being hated in the light is that this Chicago protest that I was talking about, there we go, of, it was because a sister had asked me to come sidewalk chalk at a meeting where she was being forced to attend, court ordered, um, because she the court had decided that she was no longer a fit parent and she needed to be taught, re-educated, how to be a mother to her non-binary daughter who believed she was not a daughter. And in order to do this, they sent her to a re-education program, which was a group session for parents and their trans, non-binary, etc. youth. So she's showing up to a meeting where parents are coming with their children without her child so that these other parents can show her how to be a good parent to her child. And she had referenced like it'd be nice if there were some messages to see for people to see when I show up and like I said I don't I don't like saying no in fact I love saying yes I love making that kind of vision come true so for this protest it was just me and my videographer and I went and sidewalk chalked all around the building that this um session was being held in and I put things like hopscotch hopscotch is one of my favorite things to sidewalk chalk because everyone wants to do it it's 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 like a childhood impulse you can't if you see hopscotch like how soulless do you have to be to not just jump along right and kids love it so we do hopscotch and at the end we do a positive a positive message or a message expressing why this chalk exists so no child born in the wrong body because no child is born in the wrong body there's no such thing as being born in the wrong body um children cannot consent like child safeguarding is ne is necessary like is non-negotiable these kind of messages about protecting children from gender ideology and medical experimentation lauded as treatment um, so I went and I did hopscotch, I wrote my messages large, and I wrote, I did, you know, my hashtag for Rev Fem, Rev Fem Rebellion, and just a bunch of, nothing offensive, nothing, 
nothing that would be inappropriate for a child to see. And right as I was finishing up, and this is the video that's pinned to my Twitter, these trans, a group of trans activists, maybe five or six of them, came out carrying plastic trash, trash cans, like actually like office size trash cans. And they were livid about the messages. And we just watched and filmed from afar, or not that far, but from a distance as they ran the couple blocks down to the public water fountain to fill up these plastic office trash cans and erase my chalk. Not all of it, not everything, just the things that we're talking about consent of children and how it's not possible, that children cannot consent. That was what they were attacking. Anything that referenced child safeguarding, they were erasing. What kind of people are outraged and feel the immediate need to erase any notion, any call for child safeguarding? And we just watched as they, they filmed, they splashed over it, they like angrily smeared it with their feet, like looking at me, filming me, and we just watched on outraged, outrageous, and like outraged that, that this is happening over sidewalk chalk, showing the support of child safeguarding. It's really unbelievable. But it really meant a lot to the sister that I was out there. I was able to put stickers elsewhere to show support. But it was amazing to me that the hatred of, of child safeguarding, of safeguarding women is so palpable and so present <laughs> that sidewalk chalk is treated like hate speech, offensive that child safeguarding is offensive. It's maddening that we are abused and harassed, assaulted at protests, shoved and spit at and screamed at just for saying we're women who know what women, what being a woman is. And we're here, our feminism is only for women. I don't know if you can see this, but adult human females that we are now the acceptable targets of misogyny, the worst misogyny and hate speech and abuse, all this. So a lot of us are only able to do the work we need to do, boots on the ground at night. A lot of women, whether it's, it could be broad daylight, but they don't feel comfortable stepping into it. To, to say, to speak their mind, to say who they are and why they care. And I understand why. For me, this is my call to all the women who are more angry then they are scared. I understand being scared, but a lot of us are past that point. And for me, it was women who were already past that point that helped me get past that point. Because once you're more, more angry than scared, there's very few limitations to what you can do and what, your, what power your voice has. So I'm really glad I spent four years in high school learning how to work in the dark and communicate with a team when everyone has to be quiet, when we're being silenced, because now I can put it to good use. And I'm just getting started. We're just getting started.
and they know it. So thanks for listening and I'll see you later today. <laughs>